Alaska is really one of the most dangerous places in the whole United States to work. Every year, 40 or 50 workers die, Alaskan workers die. Approximately one out of every 10 workers is seriously injured each year. They have either lost a day of work, they've been hospitalized, they've been knocked unconscious, uh, broken bones, and so forth. So one out of 10, that amounts to something like uh, 13,000 Alaskans a year are seriously injured on the job. And then, of course, if we look at certain industries, the, the incidence rate is much higher. For example, if you look at logging, then you're talking about perhaps one out of every two workers is seriously injured on the job. Uh, if you look at uh, fish processing, it's about one out of uh, every three workers is seriously injured on the job. So there are some extremely dangerous occupations here in the state of Alaska. Each employer is actually responsible for the safety of his own employees, even if he doesn't create the hazard. Uh, and that's about the only way you can regulate it. Uh, an, employer, an employer's uh, foreman, if that's all there is on a the site, has an obligation to see that his employees uh, are not exposed to hazards, uh, not only of their own job, but other hazards that may exist on the work site. There's a perception from a lot of uh, industry folks, and I think a lot of the general public, that we have an OSHA program in this state. Uh, the state runs it and that they're the policemen and that they take care of all the safety and health problems. Um, and even though we have an enforcement program, it, it doesn't really work as people might envision where sort of the, the police that come around and make sure you do things right. There are very few OSHA inspectors and basically it's a voluntary system. Okay, so you know we have 10 safety inspectors and five health people to try to inspect the whole state of Alaska and uh, it, it's decide for yourself if uh, you know, it's adequate staff. We have, you know, we're supposed to do asbestos tear-outs, we're supposed to do hospital inspections for AIDS and hepatitis risks, and uh, we're supposed to do as much construction as we can and schedule uh, these high hazard industries. Uh, we have hazardous waste site inspections we're supposed to do also, and we have five people to do this, uh, the health-related type. And then we have a local emphasis program where if there's something within the state that we're trying to focus on, we can select, uh, for the oil spill was a big local emphasis program, for example the safety of the workers on the oil spill. And this is just to cover worker safety at the, at the site. You can't believe the change in people's attitudes. The contractor I worked for, $1,000 one year, he walked out at Christmas time and said, here, thanks for being such a good worker. The next year I get hurt. He flies down to Seward to look at the crane. He can't drive five miles to see me in the hospital. I'm suddenly... I'm on the outside. I'm no longer one of his chosen few. I'm accident prone. Your insurance rates are going up. Go away, leave us alone. You don't exist anymore. You've cost us enough. One attitude that it's the worker's fault that he got hurt. The worker was, did something stupid. The worker wasn't paying attention. But somehow it was the worker's responsibility and the worker's fault and the worker gets blamed. Historically, workers' compensation insurance arose out of out of a compromise between management and labor. The part that's really working well today is the fact that workers cannot sue employers. Even if employers are negligent, workers cannot sue them. The part that isn't working well is the compensation for workers, uh, despite the fact that theoretically it's a no-fault system. Really, they have no vested interest in keeping a workplace safe or in keeping uh, uh, claims of any kind down. And the reason is very simple. Insurance companies make most of their money from investing the cash that they get. If they have more cash coming in, they have more cash to invest. And therefore, they have really very little reason to keep the costs down.